We've all heard of the term Dark Ages, that medieval period in which all learning stopped and everything became terrible. It's a term attributed to Petrarch who, like later Renaissance thinkers, thought that the Middle Ages were a period of darkness in comparison to the classical period from before and the Renaissance after. So just to let you know, the definition of Dark Ages has changed since the days of Petrarch. Nowadays it's a very specific term, but be aware that Dark Ages isn't synonymous with Middle Ages. It refers exclusively to Western Europe in the couple of centuries following the collapse of the Roman Empire. Of course the question is, how true is the commonly held vision of this period? Were the Dark Ages really that dark and unenlightened? Well, in a word, no. In a sentence, not really, but also a little bit, depending on where and where you're talking about. So Western Europe had largely been united under the rule of the Roman Empire, and after its collapse it was divided into competing realms. There's obviously too many to speak of in any sort of detail, so we'll pick two extremes and compare them. The former province of Italia and that of Britannia, whose experiences of the Dark Ages are proof that they weren't quite as awful as is often made out to be. So in Britannia, after the Romans left, things went really well. Just kidding, they fell apart almost immediately. Things like a coin-based economy, urban living and literacy died out there within a generation. Whereas in places like the Ostrogothic Kingdom, which occupied the former province of Italia and then some, very little changed. And whilst, yes, it did now have a Germanic ruler, King Theodoric, he swore fealty to the Roman Emperor in the East. The Senate continued to meet in Rome and the Pope's rights were respected, although the official church of the Ostrogoths were centred in Ravenna. As for urban living, the number of people in towns and cities had declined massively in most places. Rome's population had declined from roughly a million people in the 3rd century to about 50,000 during the Ostrogothic period. But what about the peasantry? How did life change for them after Rome had gone? Well, frankly, not very much. Most people were born, lived and died working as agricultural labourers on the same farm as their forebears had. Localised famines were also much more common and couldn't be alleviated by a centralised authority, meaning that local starvation was much more common. This largely went away in Ostrogothic Italy when it was conquered in the 6th century by the Eastern Roman Empire, known then as the Roman Empire, which undermines Petrarch's notion of the post-Roman world being an unenlightened one because the Romans never went away. The Dark Ages did see many intellectual achievements though. Monasteries like Lindisfarne and Monk Worm of Jarrow produced great historians like Bede. In the Ostrogothic Kingdom, Boethius wrote The Consolation of Philosophy, which is one of the most important medieval texts ever written. And in terms of architecture, buildings like Theodoric's Mausoleum are testament to the fact that in the Dark Ages, things weren't as dark as they may seem. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching, with extra thanks to my patrons that you see on screen now. And a special thanks to James Bizanet, Azarka Flash, Mark H, Party Boyko, David Archaeologist, Rob Waterhouse, Chris Wicker, Michael Reynolds, Gustav Swan, Onion Duck, David Silverman, Paul, Maggie Pakskowski, Winston Kaywood, Vasily Aravidis, Christian Cheke, Anthony Beckett, Sky Chappelle, Adam Harvey and Ike.